Hello YouTube, welcome to the 8th episode of Suggestion Showcase. Today I will be reviewing another of Avro Vulcan XH558's suggestion. Today I will be reviewing three aircraft, the English Electric Canberra B5, the English Electric Canberra B1.8 and the English Canberra B15. So let's get started. English Electric Canberra B5 Introduction Canberra is a well-loved aircraft that is known globally as a reliable workhorse for numerous air forces and is regarded as a classic by many aviation enthusiasts. Today's post will cover a little known variant that was a one off, yet set a transatlantic record and paved the way for the future of the development of the Canberra, the aircraft. The B 5 has a bit of a convoluted history. Initially, the VX 185, the serial number for the B 5, was meant to be one of two PR 3 prototypes that were intended to be built. However, the aircraft was converted into a bomber, into the B 5 standard. This is where the confusion begins, as it is not known for certain whether the aircraft had 14 inch. 36 cm extensions that the PR6 had was ever used, or whether it kept the B2's original fuselage. Information about this variant is very hard to come by online, and I do not have access to primary sources. The history of the Canberra prototypes is quite hard to follow, with certain documents even stating that the aircraft was meant to be a T4 prototype. I have asked people who had viewed the documents, and they said that irrespective of whether it was intended to be a PR3 or a T4 prototype, it is most likely the length of the standard B2 fuselage that was kept, as the camera bay of the PR3 was done away with and the fuselage was most likely kept the same length. Anyways, let's get on with the aircraft. The conversion of the aircraft on the production line happened in 1951 and the aircraft took to the skies in August of that year. The aircraft was a hybrid of sort, essentially a link between the B2 and the B6 and acted as a prototype for the latter. It was meant to be used as a pathfinder or target marker, and was meant to carry flares or incendiaries, but it could also be used as a bomber if necessary. By the time it was built, this role had already been effectively been redundant, so it was used for other purposes, record breaking purposes. The record. The Canberra set multiple speed and altitude records by this point, and on the 26th of August 1952, it added to that list. The aircraft was flown from RAF Alder Grove in North Ireland to Gander and back in 10 hours, 2 minutes and 29.28 seconds by Ronald P. Biamont at the controls. Which with Peter Hillwood and Dennis Watson as navigators. Thus, the Canberra earned another record under its belt. After the record, VX-185 was converted into the prototype for the BI-8, low-altitude intruder variant. The nose section was removed in order to make way for the new nose, which featured a fighter-style tear job canopy, offset to the left, a design trend that was making its rounds in the final drawing offices of the various manufacturing companies in the 50s. The original nose section was removed and was put on the play at the Science Museum before being moved to the National Museum of Flight at East Fortune in Scotland. Sadly, the now BI-8 prototype VX-185 was not so lucky. After working as the prototype, the aircraft was transferred to the A&AEE in 1955 before being transferred to the Ferrand as a target for a radar test. The aircraft was transferred yet again to Shorts at Belfast to support the work on the PR-9. This was short-lived, however, and it was quickly sent to RAF St. Athan, where it was used as ground instruction instructional airframe before being cut up to scrap in 1964. Performance for the B-5 Date 1951 Mark B-5 Crew 3 One pilot a navigator and bomb aimer. Top speed 570 miles an hour or 313 kilometers an hour. Range 2660 miles or 4281 kilometers. Weapons up to 6000 pounds or 2721 kilos of bombs. Length and size are to be taken the same as the B2, though the wings are the same as those of the B6. Conclusion This aircraft would be a unique testament to a very sound, beautiful, and popular design that is well loved by many. It would make for a good premium or bundle purchase due to uniqueness. I'm slightly disappointed by the fact that there is little concrete information online, but I guess that's just part of what makes researching these topics fun. So, the second Canberra on this list, the English Electric Canberra BI-8. The Canberra BI-8 was a variant of the Canberra designed for long-range interdiction missions. Description. I have already covered the history of the VX-185 in a thread. I shall link below in the sources section, but I shall give it a history in brief. In 19 in 1954, the aircraft was converted from the B-5 standard to the B-I-8. The aircraft appeared at the annual SBAC show in Fernborough that same year. In a rather moody-looking all-black painted scheme, the B-I-8 was the main intruder variant of the Canberra, as the B-I-6 was mainly a stopgap. The aircraft featured the same weaponry with a removable pack of four 20mm Hispano cannons, as well as the underwing pylons for mounting bombs or rocket pods. Its main use was to deep 
penetration missions to harass enemy supply and communication lines and destroy military bases and staging posts, as well as to destroy aircraft while they're still at the airfield. Tactics reminiscent of the mosquito intruders from the Second World War. The type was also outfitted for use in the nuclear strike role which was mostly aimed at the same targets. These types were both British and American nuclear weapons, the later of which was provided under Project E. This was the height of the Cold War, and NATO's main response was mass nuclear attack against the attacking Soviets. The main difference to the earlier Canberra variant is its nose section. The fishbowl style canopy of the original Canberra was replaced by a teardrop fighter style canopy that was offset to the left, a typical British design trait at the time. The teardrop canopy apparently gave better visibility at low altitudes, which became the new operating environment for the Canberra as Soviet air defenses became increasingly advanced. The Canberra truly excelled at this job, regardless of the altitude. The pilot sat next to the navigator with a bombardier in the front. The BI-8 was quickly sent to units in Germany as well as the near and far east. General characteristics of the Canberra BI-8 crew 3. Length was 65 feet 6 inches or 19.96 meters, wingspan was 64 feet or 19.51 meters, height was 15 feet 8 inches or 4.77 meters, wing area was 960 square foot or 89.19 meters squared, empty weight was 21,650 pounds or 9,820 kilos, loaded weight was 46,000 pounds or 20,865 kilos, max take of weight was 55,000 pounds or 24,948 kilos. Power plant was two Vers Vers A1 RA7 Mark 109 turbojets with 7,400 pounds of force or 36 kilonewtons. Maximum speed was Mach 0.88 or 580 miles an hour or 933 kilometers an hour at 40,000 feet or 12,192 meters. Combat radius was 810 miles or 700 nautical miles or 1,200 kilometers. Ferry range was 2,280 miles or 2,940 nautical miles or 5,440 kilometers. Service ceiling was 48,000 feet or 15,000 meters. Rate of Climb was 2,400 feet a minute or 17 meters a second. Wing loading was 48 pounds per square foot or 234 kilos meters squared. Trust to weight was 0 0.37. And now for the ornaments. Guns. It had four 20mm Hispano Mark V cannons mounted in the near Bombay with 500 rounds each gun. Or two 7.62mm machine gun pods. Rockets. Two unguided rocket pods with 37 2 inch rockets. Or two matter rocket pods with 18 SNEP 68mm rockets each. Bombs. Total of 8,000 pounds or 2,628 kilos of payload can be mounted inside the internal Bombay and on two under wing hard points with the ability to carry a variety of bombs typically the internal bomb bay can hold up up to nine 500 pound or 227 kilo bombs or six 1000 pound bombs or 4054 kilos or one 4000 pound bomb or 1814 kilo bomb while the pylons can hold four 500 pound bomb or 227 kilo bombs or two 1000 pound 454 kilo bombs nuclear weapons in addition to the conventional ordinance the Canberra was also type approved for tactical nuclear weapon delivery including the mark 7 b28 mod 270 kilo ton yield b57 and b43 as part of the joint program with the united states plus the red beer and WE-177A Mod A 10 kiloton yield nuclear bombs. All nuclear weapons were carried out internally. Conclusion Considering that this is one of the major variants of the Canberra, it truly deserves a place in game. Now, the third and last plane, English Electric Canberra B-15. Introduction The Canberra B-15 is a rather interesting variant of the Canberra, as it was the only one in service to mount missiles of any kind. What makes it even more interesting that these missiles were the AS-30, a type not often talked about in British service, especially since it only lasted a few years in service. Description The B-15 is essentially just a heavily refurbished B-6 with stronger wings. Note that this is the B-6 variant, which was itself an upgrade to the B-2, not the B-I-6 we see in game already which has more in common with the BI-8 version I discussed in a previous suggestion already. Due to this, it does not carry the 20mm Hispano gun pack. It carries the same armament as a B-6, with the main difference being the ability to carry an AS-30 on both under wing pylons. In 1965, it was decided to arm two Canberra squadrons, number 32 and number 73 squadrons, with AS-30 missiles. 
a thousand units were procured, with the aircraft being modified to carry the weapon at Samesbury. Two aircraft were used to help with the program, WH-966 for crew familiarization and WH-967 for trials with the Bolton Pole, which was specifically modified to carry a camera and a small ventral hump in the front of the Bombay. Many things occurred at the L Adam test range. Number 103 MU at RAF Acreo TV was used to convert aircraft to use missiles. By 1966, the missile was deemed combat ready, although Nord had begun to improve the missile. The variant on the camera was kept the same. Number 45 Squadron also converted to use the missile. In 1967, the squadron fired its first live test fire, and subsequent exercises followed. By 1969, the withdrawal of British forces from the Far East was begun in earnest, and restrictions on live firing were lifted to get rid of existing stores. Number 45 Squadron flew many happy hours of missile firing before it was disbanded, at Tengah on 18 February 1970. Number 81 Squadron had disbanded at Tengah on 16 January 1970, and Number 20 Squadron with its Hunter FGA-9s and Scottish Aviation Pioneer CC-1s followed unit on 18 February. Thus, the short chapter of AS-30 in RAF history had ended. So let's talk about the specifications of the aircraft. The wingspan was 19.5 meters or 62 feet and 11 inches. Wing area was 89.23 square meters or 960 square feet. Length was 19.96 meters or 65 feet 6 inches. Height was 4 meters 75 centimeters or 15 feet 7 inches. Empty weight was 10,070 kilos or 22,200 pounds. Max load weight was 20,860 kilos or 46,000 pounds. Maximum speed was 915 kilometers an hour or 570 miles an hour or 495 knots. Service ceiling was 14,630 meters or 48,000 feet. Range with no tanks was 4,275 kilometers or 2,656 miles or 2,000 310 nautical miles and the armament was iron bombs in the bomb and wing pylons as-30 missiles only on the wing pylons or two inch marco cell rocket pods on the wing pylons so yeah very good suggestions by avril vulcan um i feel like all of them should come to the game as texture vehicles and honestly that's all i have to say about all of these suggestions thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys on the next episode of suggestion showcase